welcome to The Rutledge Perspective. I am your host, Laurel Rutledge, and this show is where we talk about the things that are top of mind as you navigate your career, whether corporate or otherwise. The plan is to get you out of your rut and talk you back off that ledge with insights and perspectives on the daily grind. Welcome to The Village. On this week's episode of The Rutledge Perspective, we're talking about resilience. For those of you who've been listening to me for a while, you'd know that the topics I discuss are really meant to be relevant for both individuals and leaders as we all move through both our professional and personal lives, because you can't really separate the personal and professional. And most of the time, the issues stem from either a situation that was brought to me by someone else that I worked through with them or from a personal experience. Well, this week's topic came to me after an absolutely amazing birthday month that ended in shall we say, an interesting state of mind. For for many, many years, thanks to some input by a dear cousin of mine, I've taken vacation on my birthday. No matter where I was working or what I was doing, I always took the time around my birthday off. And where whether I really celebrated specifically, that wasn't the point. Rather, it was just to take the time to acknowledge the day. As a late September baby, it was just really weird to have my birthday at that time. So I was younger because I got in school earlier, a year early. And most of the time school had just started because it's late September. So when you're younger, you don't necessarily know a bunch of people. So you can't have a big old party because you don't know people to really invite to your party. Or once you get to college, again, you just got there. So who do you know? So celebrating solo for me has never been that big a deal. And then in the last several years, I started taking a solo retreat on purpose for my birthday. And I took it as a time to rest and reflect and rejuvenate and to review the last year and get ready for the next one. And usually it's a really great time of reflection. I go to to somewhere out in the woods or somewhere really great. And it's just a really great time for me to get pumped up about what's coming next. But this year was a little bit different. It just felt really, really heavy. I went to a great place, had a great time, got to hang out with a really dear friend of mine, which I talked about last week, but it still felt heavy. There was like this air of darkness or something, which is really unusual for me because I like to live my life glass half full. And the feeling I had was pretty empty. And so I said, well, this doesn't make any sense. Let's figure out what this is because you've got stuff to do. And as I thought about it and I moved through the week after my birthday and tried to figure out what was going on and get myself back aligned, I realized that it is being in this state of constant need to be resilient, this constant conflict that's going on right now that really has a dark cloud over just about everything and everyone. And it really does put pressure on our ability to be resilient. So what do I mean by that, by being resilient? So many of you are in organizations that have cultures that are trying to be people centered, but are still holding on to old tropes. For example, the CEOs of Wells Fargo not too long ago said that essentially they didn't have a great level of diversity because there just weren't enough black people that were talented out there. I'm paraphrasing. Now imagine if the CEO feels that way, how that translates into the way people of color are treated in that organization. Or think about the organizations that still believe that the only people who actually have skills to run the business are the ones that have been there the longest, even when they've spent a lot of money and a lot of time to go hire experienced talent. And that leads to unnecessary turnover and it leads to cultural challenges because they tell you, we brought you here because you have stuff, you know, stuff that we don't know and we want that external talent. But then when you get here, they say, oh, but that's not the way we do it here. Or let's take even a more recent example. Companies that are trying to really get back to work, to business as usual, but they're having difficulty managing the employee experience. Some are pushing so hard for normalcy because they just want to get back to, to just normal. And they're pushing so hard for that because they need it themselves. But that means they don't have the ability to show compassion for those who are still grieving. And that grief may be for a specific loss. They actually lost someone in this pandemic or just the loss of what they felt was normal before. And if you take any of these circumstances, there's always at the center of it, one individual, the person who's waking up every day with all this stuff surrounding them, the person who's just trying to make it through another day, the person who is doing the best they can with what they've got at the time. Being in a state of constant conflict is exhausting. Being in this heaviness is exhausting and constantly putting on that face, 
and I'm unable to show up as you fully are, that begins to take a toll. It takes a toll on the person and ultimately takes a toll on the person's performance. And all of those actions and all of those circumstances really put pressure on our ability to function and really call out and bring to the forefront those people who are most resilient. Now, a simple definition of resilience is the ability to become strong, healthy, or successful again after something bad happens. Okay, well, with this definition, you know, the reality is humans are fundamentally highly resistant and highly resilient. Fundamentally, we are highly resilient beings. We would not have survived all of these eons if we weren't. But another perspective on resilience is a quote that I saw from Maya Angelou, which is, I can be changed by what happens to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. Or another quote by Mary Holloway, which is, resilience is knowing that you are the only one that has the power and the responsibility to pick yourself up. And as individuals, our resilience varies widely. Some of us refuse to be reduced or permanently impacted by our circumstances. We're more of a real fight person. We're going to fight these circumstances. But others sit more fully into the bad, but then respond with strength to move forward. So perhaps we're in that freeze first, then we fight. And whether you're a fight or a flight or a freeze person, what you do with what you have is arguably an indication of your resilience. And our capacity for resilience may vary over time and based on our circumstances. So you can't beat yourself up if right now you are sitting in overwhelm. The idea of resilience is that you don't stay there. Granted, we are in unprecedented times and we're seeing the full spectrum of responses play out in our everyday lives. There are those who are fighting change with every single fiber of their being, even the changes that are necessary for survival. It is just beyond comprehension. And then there are those who are just frozen. They are unable to function at all because it's all just too much. And a sidebar here, many of those folks who are frozen right now, we need to pay attention and be mindful. They have been courageously battling either physical or mental health issues or addictions, maybe silently. There may not be anyone who knows. And our current environment exacerbates their battle. And it is incumbent upon us as individuals, as people, as collective humans to pay attention. So sidebar for those who are truly in frozen mode. And then besides those who are fighting or those who are frozen, there are those who are just fleeing. They're completely sheltering in place. They're avoiding conflict at all costs. They just want to be left alone. And what is important is that we acknowledge that all of these responses are real for the individual who's experiencing them. And just like grief, we move through those pieces of fight or freeze or flight, just like we do through the stages of grief. But to be resilient, we must be able to see and acknowledge and understand our circumstances. And once we do that, we can acknowledge the personal and professional impact of those circumstances. And ultimately we can determine how we will respond to the impacts that those have on us. And while our current collective circumstances are a bit nuts, the idea of managing environmental pressure is not new for anyone. Absolutely anyone, even students, they regularly deal with cultural and societal and systemic challenges in their institutions. Now, virtual versus in-person, hybrid, not hybrid, those who have access and those who don't. Dress codes, grading systems, social constructs, performance pressures, all of those things exist for students. Bless their hearts, I don't even know how you do it these days. Their existence of these, these challenges, along with just the human desire to belong, and the propensity to find examples of something or someone that is worse than me or my circumstances, all of that serves to create an environment ripe for bullying and the need for resilience to survive somewhat intact. Parents, we're constantly comparing skills to those of other parents based on how their children act or how they're treated by others or how we see other parents responding to things. Women, we're trying to navigate an environment where there's still confusion between aggressive versus assertive. Now, women, we're not confused, but those who are watching us are confused between aggression and assertiveness. And then if you add race to that mix or any sexual orientation or other, the insanity moves to a whole different stratosphere. 
And one would think that as adults, we know better so we could do better. But walk around any company, even those companies that have the best of designations, best place to work, best place for working women, best for those with children, best of whatever. And you'll still see and feel the same cultural and systemic discord. You'll see people thriving, certainly. People who just, they are finding a way to make it happen no matter what. But you'll also see just as many who are simply surviving. And, and a sidebar again on small business owners. I challenge you to walk around your organizations as well. And I say walk. It may not be physically right now. It may be a virtual walk, picking up the phone, getting on a Zoom. But walk around yours as well, because just because you're small doesn't mean you're immune to these cultural quagmires. Be mindful of what behavior you're encouraging and be clear about your expectations. And most importantly, be certain that your behaviors and your actions are both aligned with each other and with the expectations that you put out there. Because resiliency is a reality and a need in your small organizations as well. But here's the great news in all of this, in all of this challenge and all of this craziness, the wonderful thing is that each and every one of us has the power to be resilient. We simply have to decide to be. And while it's not easy, I'm not that naive. It is not always easy to be resilient. It is possible. It is a decision. But being resilient means that we can acknowledge the times when we merely, when merely surviving is the goal. And that's okay. And once we acknowledge that merely surviving is the goal right now, we can also push through surviving to get to thriving. We can make our circumstances and, and understand them. We can, we can take them and sit with them and give them space because doing so, we can regain our power over those circumstances as opposed to the other way around. And once we regain our power, we can move forward. And that is what resilience looks like. Resilience doesn't mean never feeling challenged or upset or downright anxious and depressed. Resilience means taking all of that and learning from it and moving forward. So today, I declare that our collective superpower is resilience. So give yourself some time to sit in the mud puddle of craziness today. See that metaphor? Sit in the mud puddle of craziness today. Wallow in it a bit. Then make a few mud pies. Splash around in it like your kid or your pet. Enjoying the pleasure of getting dirty. Because in that dirtiness, we learn something. And then go take a shower and get back at it. Because at the end of the day, you got this. And that is the Rutledge Perspective for this week. Thank you for tuning in and for listening. I hope this made sense to you. I really believe that we all are capable of being resilient and more today than ever before. That is something that we need. I'd love to hear your feedback. Let me know if there's something else you want to talk about. Just send me a note, give us a like on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And we'll see you next week. Take care. You have been listening to The Rutledge Perspective. Thank you for tuning in. If we've given you a new perspective or helped you clarify your own, please give us a five-star rating. You can find more information about this and other episodes of the show on laurelrutledge.com slash podcast. And you can subscribe to the show where you get your favorite podcasts. You can also follow me on social media. Oh, and if there's someone you think would enjoy or benefit from the Rutledge perspective, please pass it along. Thank you for tuning in.